Nhat, Peter Stuyvesant, English pronunciation slash staff dot dot SNT slash, in Dutch also Peter and Petrus Stuyvesant, 1610-1672, served as the last Dutch director general of the colony of New Netherland from 1647 until it was ceded provisionally to the English in 1664, after which it was renamed New York. He was a major figure in the early history of New York City and his name has been given to various landmarks and points of interest throughout the city, e.g. Stuyvesant High School, Stuyvesant Town Peter Cooper Village, Stuyvesant Plaza, Bedford Stuyvesant Neighborhood, etc. Stuyvesant's accomplishments as Director General included a great expansion for the settlement of New Amsterdam beyond the southern tip of Manhattan. Among the projects built by Stuyvesant's administration were the protective wall on Wall Street, the canal that became Broad Street, and Broadway. Stuyvesant, himself a member of the Dutch Reformed Church, opposed religious pluralism and came into conflict with Lutherans, Jews, Roman Catholics, and Quakers as they attempted to build places of worship in the city and practice their faiths. Early Life Peter Stuyvesant was born in 1610 in Peperga, Friesland, in the Netherlands, to Balthasar Stuyvesant, a reformed Calvinist minister, and Margaretha Hardenstein. He grew up in Peperga, Scarpenziel, and Berlicum. Career At the age of 20, Stuyvesant went to the University of Franeker, where he studied languages and philosophy but several years later he was expelled from the school after he seduced the daughter of his landlord. He was then sent to Amsterdam by his father, where Stuyvesant now using the Latinized version of his first name, Petrus, to indicate that he had university schooling joined the Dutch West India Company. In 1630, the company assigned him to be their commercial agent on a small island just off of Brazil, Fernando de Naranja and then five years later transferred him to the nearby Brazilian state of Pernambuco. In 1638, he was moved again, this time to the colony of Curaçao, the main Dutch naval base in the West Indies, where, just four years later, at barely 30 years old, he became the acting governor of that colony, as well as Aruba and Bonaire, a position he held until 1644. In April 1644, he coordinated and led an attack on the island of St. Martin which the Spanish had taken from the Dutch, and had almost been recaptured by them in 1625 with an armada of 12 ships carrying more than a thousand men. He invested the island when the Spanish would not surrender, but was not successful in preventing them from getting supplies from Puerto Rico. A cannonball crushed Stuyvesant's right leg and it was amputated just below the knee. Still in severe pain, he called off the siege a month later. Stuyvesant returned to the Netherlands for convalescence, where his right leg was replaced with a wooden peg. Stuyvesant was given the nicknames Peg Leg Pete and Old Silver Nails because he used a wooden stick studded with silver nails as a prosthesis. The West India Company saw the loss of Stuyvesant's leg as a Roman sacrifice while Stuyvesant himself saw the fact that he did not die from his injury as a sign that God was saving him in order to do great things. A year later, in May 1645, he was selected by the company to replace Willem Kieft as Director General of the New Netherland Colony, including New Amsterdam, the site of present-day New York City. New Netherland Stuyvesant had to wait for his appointment to be confirmed by the Dutch States General, and during that time he married Judith Baird, who was the daughter of a Huguenot minister, and hailed from Breda. Together, they left Amsterdam in December 1646, and, after stopping at Curaçao, arrived in New Amsterdam in August 1647. Kieft's administration of the colony had left the colony in terrible condition. Only a small number of villages remained after Kieft's wars, and many of the inhabitants had been driven away to return home, leave only 250 to 300 men able to carry arms.
Keeft himself had accumulated over 4,000 guilders during his term in office, and had become an alcoholic. With certainty that putting New Netherland to rights was the work which God had saved him for, Stuyvesant began the task of rebuilding the physical and moral state of the colony, returning it to being the kind of well-run place that the Dutch preferred. He told the people I shall govern you as a father his children. In September 1647, Stuyvesant appointed an advisory council of nine men as representatives of the colonists. In 1648, a conflict started between him and Brandt Ertz van Slechtenhorst, the commissary of the patroonship Rensselaerwijk, which surrounded Fort Orange, present-day Albany. Stuyvesant claimed he had power over Rensselaerwijk, despite special privileges granted to Kilian van Rensselaer in the patroonship regulations of 1629. In 1649, Stuyvesant marched to Fort Orange with a military escort and ordered bordering settlement houses to be raised to permit a better defense of the fort in case of an attack from the Native Americans. When Van Slechtenhorst refused, Stuyvesant sent a group of soldiers to enforce his orders. The controversy that followed resulted in the founding of the new settlement, Beverwijk. Expansion of the Colony Stuyvesant became involved in a dispute with Theophilus Eden, the governor of English New Haven Colony, over the border of the two colonies. In September 1650, a meeting of the Commissioners on Boundaries took place in Hartford, Connecticut, called the Treaty of Hartford, to settle the border between New Amsterdam and the English colonies to the north and east. The border was arranged to the dissatisfaction of the nine men, who declared that the governor had ceded away enough territory to found 50 colonies each 50 miles square. Stuyvesant then threatened to dissolve the council. A new plan of municipal government was arranged in the Netherlands, and the name New Amsterdam was officially declared on February 2, 1653. Stuyvesant made a speech for the occasion, saying that his authority would remain undiminished. Stuyvesant was then ordered to the Netherlands, but the order was soon revoked under pressure from the states of Holland and the city of Amsterdam. Stuyvesant prepared against an attack by ordering the citizens to dig a ditch from the North River to the East River and to erect a fortification. In 1653, a convention of two deputies from each village in New Netherland demanded reforms, and Stuyvesant commanded that assembly to disperse, saying, we derive our authority from God and the company, not from a few ignorant subjects. In the summer of 1655, he sailed down the Delaware River with a fleet of seven vessels and about 700 men and took possession of the colony of New Sweden, which was renamed New Amstel. In his absence, Pavonia was attacked by Native Americans, during the Peach War on September 15, 1655. In 1657, the directors of the Dutch West India Company wrote to Stuyvesant to tell him that they were not going to be able to send him all the tradesmen that he requested and that he would have to purchase slaves in addition to the tradesmen he would receive. In 1660, Stuyvesant was quoted as saying that nothing is of greater importance than the early instruction of youth. In 1661, New Amsterdam had one grammar school, two free elementary schools, and had licensed 28 masters of school. Religious Freedom In 1657, Stuyvesant, who did not tolerate full religious freedom in the colony, and was strongly committed to the supremacy of the Dutch Reformed Church, refused to allow Lutherans the right to organize a church when he also issued an ordinance forbidding them from worshipping in their own homes, the directors of the Dutch West Indies Company, three of whom were Lutherans, told him to rescind the order and allow private gatherings of Lutherans. Freedom of religion was further tested when Stuyvesant refused to allow Jewish refugees, from Dutch Brazil, to settle permanently in New Amsterdam, without passports, and join the existing community of Jews with passports from Amsterdam. 
Stuyvesant attempted to have Jews in a friendly way to depart the colony. As he wrote to the Amsterdam Chamber of the Dutch West India Company in 1654, he hoped that the deceitful race, such hateful enemies and blasphemers of the name of Christ, be not allowed to further infect and trouble this new colony. He referred to Jews as a repugnant race and usurers, and was concerned that Jewish settlers should not be granted the same liberties enjoyed by Jews in Holland, lest members of other persecuted minority groups, such as Roman Catholics, be attracted to the colony. Stuyvesant's decision was again rescinded after pressure from the directors of the company. As a result, Jewish immigrants were allowed to stay in the colony as long as their community was self-supporting, however, Stuyvesant and the company would not allow them to build a synagogue, forcing them to worship instead in a private house. In 1657, the Quakers, who were newly arrived in the colony, drew his attention. He ordered the public torture of Robert Hodgson, a 23-year-old Quaker convert who had become an influential preacher. Stuyvesant then made an ordinance, punishable by fine and imprisonment, against anyone found guilty of harboring Quakers. That action led to a protest from the citizens of Flushing, which came to be known as the Flushing Remonstrance, considered by some a precursor to the United States Constitution's provision on freedom of religion in the Bill of Rights. Capitulation In 1664, King Charles II of England ceded to his brother, the Duke of York, later King James II, a large tract of land that included all of New Netherland. Four English ships bearing 450 men, commanded by Richard Nichols, seized the Dutch colony. On August 30, 1664, George Cartwright sent the governor a letter demanding surrender. He promised life, estate, and liberty to all who would submit to the king's authority. On September 9, 1664, Stuyvesant signed a treaty at his Bulwerage house. Nichols was declared governor, and the city was renamed New York. Stuyvesant obtained civil rights and freedom of religion in the Articles of Capitulation. The Dutch settlers mainly belonged to the Dutch Reformed Church, a Calvinist denomination, holding to the three forms of unity, Belgic Confession, Heidelberg Catechism, Canons of Dort. The English were Anglicans, holding to the 39 Articles, a Protestant confession, with bishops. In 1665, Stuyvesant went to the Netherlands to report on his term as governor. On his return to the colony, he spent the remainder of his life on his farm of 62 acres outside the city, called the Great Bowery, beyond which stretched the woods and swamps of the village of New Harlem. A pear tree that he reputedly brought from the Netherlands in 1647 remained at the corner of 13th Street and 3rd Avenue until 1867 when it was destroyed by a storm, bearing fruit almost to the last. The house was destroyed by fire in 1777. He also built an executive mansion of stone called Whitehall. Personal Life in 1645, Stuyvesant married Judith Bayard, c. 1610-1687, of the Bayard family. Her brother, Samuel Bayard, was the husband of Stuyvesant's sister, Anna Stuyvesant. Together, Petrus and Judith had two sons. Balthasar Lazarus Stuyvesant, 1647-1678, who settled in the West Indies and married Maria Lucas Ropsayat. Nikolais Willem Stuyvesant, 1648-1698, who first married Maria Beekman, 1650-1679, daughter of Wilhelmus Beekman, and after her death, Elizabeth Slechtenhorst. He died in August 1672 and his body was entombed in the east wall of St. Mark's Church in the Bowery which sits on the site of Stuyvesant's family chapel. Legacy Stuyvesant and his family were large landowners in the northeastern portion of New Amsterdam, and the Stuyvesant name is currently associated with three places in Manhattan's east side, 
near present-day Gramercy Park, the Stuyvesant Town Housing Complex, Stuyvesant Square, a park in the area, and the Stuyvesant Apartments on East 18th Street. His farm, called the Boerage the 17th century Dutch word for farm was the source for the name of the Manhattan Street and surrounding neighborhood named the Bowery. The contemporary neighborhood of Bedford Stuyvesant, Brooklyn includes Stuyvesant Heights and retains its name. Also named after him are the hamlets of Stuyvesant and Stuyvesant Falls in Columbia County, New York, where descendants of the early Dutch settlers still live and where the Dutch Reformed Church remains an important part of the community, as well as shopping centers, yacht clubs and other buildings and facilities throughout the area where the Dutch colony once was. A statue of Stuyvesant by J. Massey Reen situated at Bergen Square in Jersey City was dedicated in 1915 to mark the 250th anniversary of the Dutch settlement there more modestly. Peter Island in the British Virgin Islands was also named after Stuyvesant during the Dutch West India Company's administration of that territory. Descendants The last acknowledged direct descendant of Peter Stuyvesant to bear his surname was Augustus Van Horn Stuyvesant. Jr., who died a bachelor in 1953 at the age of 83 in his mansion at 2 East 79th Street. Rutherford Stuyvesant, the 19th century New York developer, and his descendants are also descended from Peter Stuyvesant, however, Ruth Ford Stuyvesant's name was changed from Stuyvesant Rutherford in 1863 to satisfy the terms of the 1847 will of Peter Gerard Stuyvesant. His descendants include Hamilton Fish, 1808-1893, the 16th Governor of New York, a United States Senator and United States Secretary of State. John Winthrop Chandler, 1826-1877, a lawyer and a U.S. representative from New York. Stuyvesant Fish Morris, 1843-1928, a prominent physician. Stuyvesant Fish, 1851-1923, a president of the Illinois Central Railroad who was prominent in the U.S. Gilded Age. Louis Stuyvesant Chandler, 1869-1942, a lieutenant governor of New York. Edith Stuyvesant Gary, 1873-1958, an American philanthropist who was married to George Washington Vanderbilt II and Peter Golett Gary. Loudon Wainwright Jr., 1924-1988, an American writer. John Smith, 1931-1995, the American actor who starred in two NBC Western television series Cimarron City. Loudon Wainwright III, B1946, the American singer-songwriter is a direct descendant through his great-great-grandfather John Howard Wainwright, who married Margaret Stuyvesant. In popular culture, Stuyvesant is mentioned in Washington Irving's short story Rip Van Winkle in the following passage just about the beginning of the government of the good Peter Stuyvesant, may he rest in peace. And a bit later, who figured so gallantly in the chivalrous days of Peter Stuyvesant. Stuyvesant is the major antagonist in the 1938 Kurt Weill Maxwell Anderson musical Knickerbocker Holiday, in which he sings the song September Song. In the stage production he was portrayed by Walter Houston, in the much-altered 1944 film version he was portrayed by Charles Coburn in his only singing role. In Sid Meier's Civilization IV, Colonization, Peter Stuyvesant is one of the leaders of the Dutch colonies. Adrian van der Donk is the other possible Dutch leader. In Sid Meier's Colonization computer game, Stuyvesant can be elected to the Continental Congress allowing the player to build custom houses which automate trade with the mother country. Stuyvesant was a key figure in the Belgian comic strip Siski and Wiska in episode 269, De Stuggy Stuyvesant. The old-time radio show Duffy's Tavern had an episode which used a newly discovered diary of Stuyvesant as a plot device. A cigarette brand by Philip Morris International and Imperial Tobacco with British American Tobacco is named Peter Stuyvesant.
These cigarettes are popular in Australia, Greece, New Zealand, Zambia, Malaysia, and South Africa. In Charles Bukowski's 1978 novel Women, the main character, Henry Chinesky, vomits on Peter Stuyvesant's burial vault cover before a poetry reading at St. Mark's Church. The German singer-songwriter and political activist Rio Reiser used Peter Stuyvesant founding New York as an example of a real event in his song All Sluge, All Lies, a song that contrasts real events and popular culture. Stuyvesant High School in Manhattan was named after him. In the 1955 television production of the Rogers and Hart musical Dearest Enemy, General Howe, Cyril Richard, and Captain Copeland, Robert Sterling, sing a less than complimentary song about Stuyvesant, Sweet Peter. Stuyvesant appears in Gene Zimmerman's 2013 novel The Orphan Master, in which he is portrayed as somewhat tyrannical and not well liked by the settlers of New Amsterdam. In the American TV show The Venture Brothers, Dean Venture attends Stuyvesant University starting in the show's sixth season. The fictional college is located in New York City, and its logo features Peter Stuyvesant with the words Passus sum cum lignia cruris or I have suffered with a wooden leg. From 1927 to 1962 a passenger ferry riverboat operated on the Hudson River, New York called Peter Stuyvesant. In 1963, it was then purchased and placed on permanent mooring next to Anthony's Pier for Boston, Massachusetts, it broke free, listed then sank during the blizzard of 1978. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.